Welcome back to another video. The Chevelle's still up in the air. We're carrying on work with the upgrades. Um, hopefully by the time this video comes out, the exhaust is done. So we're gonna focus today on that brake valve and the uh, line lock. So let's get inside the workshop and have a look. So these are the parts we're looking at today. Uh, this is the old Chevrolet proportioning valve. Um, we're getting rid of that due to, I think I've already explained, but due to plumbing in a line lock. Um, I didn't like the way I was gonna end up having to do it because you have to put it after that proportioning valve. It was just gonna look messy. So that can go in the bin. Uh, and we've gone in favor of this Wilwood unit, which has got an adjustable bias. I can put the line lock in from the master cylinder straight into it, T-piece out to the two front brakes and the rear just plumbed in and joined to the rest of the system, we got it. So the Wheelwood unit comes with a hydraulic brake pressure switch. Uh, my Chevelle runs a switch on the pedal, so we're gonna get rid of that. Um, hopefully, using some parts that I pre-ordered when I wasn't originally gonna use it, ordered these little Wheelwood blanks to blank off some bits on the old proportioning valve, so I'm gonna try and see if that works. That's much neater. Get rid of that silly switch. Make it a bit more compact unit. You may have noticed there's a couple of adapters on here. Um, that's because I want to run the original sized quarter inch pipe for the rear braking system. Um, and this valve isn't sized for that. It's sized for 3 16 I think that is. Um, yeah, so size it up. A couple of adapters should work. And then the uh, Got the ends for the line lock. So the only real challenge we've got with this, it's not even really a challenge really, is just trying to mount these so they look nice and neat. Um, other than that, it's just simple brake pipe plumbing and a little bit of wiring, and that's it. But yeah, trying to make them look like they should be there is the uh, challenge of the day. I'm thinking, originally I was thinking of Putting the line lock there and maybe the um, proportioning valve there. But I think it's just going to look messy with all the brake pipes everywhere. I think still going to mount that under there. We'll make a little bracket. I'm going to get some cardboard out in a minute. Make a template up. And then I think we're going to sort of let it evolve from there, but I'm thinking that we'll probably put the bias valve maybe down here somewhere. Maybe mount it off these original holes here, make a bracket off of there. I think put it there. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's gonna be the goal. Who knows, kind of got to go with the flow though, so. Got to start somewhere. Let's start with that line lock, make a template, get that mounted up and go with the flow. So this is the start of my template. Um, that's to fit around the mast cylinder, the mounting holes on it, and the rest of it just looks like lines. But uh, it does make some sense. Um, just drawing the center point of the holes for the line lock there and how wide that actual bracket is then I can make up a shape from there. Got something to work from here now. I don't think that'll be the final shape. We might um, add some details into it, maybe a couple of dimple dies, maybe take some of the material off of here. But basic idea, bolts to the mast cylinder, holds it underneath there, and then that'll bolt on under there. In an effort to try and cut down on some of the uh, grinding dust I make in this garage, uh, bought this little bandsaw off of Facebook Marketplace. It's meant for woodwork. It's not the most powerful thing in the world. I didn't pay a lot for it, so I thought I'd give it a quick go. Uh, put a metal blade on it, and it, it seems to be okay. This is two mil thick steel. It's cutting through that. Cuts through little aluminium quite happily. Um, yeah, so I've drawn my Template onto here, we're going to cut that out now. 
using this new bad boy. not even finished making this bracket yet and I'm already on the third version of it so start with the template first one whole saw grabbed that and made a mess because yeah to basically get this bit here I'm whole sawing it out first give me a nice circle and then making the rest of it from there started making it out of steel two mil thick steel which you know I've got most of the basic shape there um, and then I remembered I had some aluminium so you know race car lightweight make it out of aluminium. Um, it cuts a bit easier in the bandsaw, it's a bit nicer to work with, and I think it's gonna be plenty strong enough, it's two mil thick. If not, we can, you know, add some rigidity to it, but it's literally half the weight of that one. So yeah, just gotta finish adding some shape to this now, round off the corners, um, and then yeah, we'll probably put our bend in it, maybe mount the line lock, like I said, I might, might put some dimple dies in this bit, make it even more lightweight, also it'll add some rigidity to it. Got it all shaped up how I want it roughly. Now we just need to put the bend in there, so let's go get the folder out. I think 90 is about where we want it. Just throw it on there, make sure we're looking all good. Fits pretty smart to be fair. Fits in there nice. 90 degrees like we thought. Tucked up under there. And we can um, put the solenoid there somewhere. Bolt the solenoid on, bolt it back onto the mast cylinder here. It's pretty out the way, I think. Pretty neat, hidden away. You can still see it, but yeah. There she is. A little bit of wobble in it, but obviously the brake pipe's gonna take up a little bit of wobble there. And um, yeah, like I said, strengthen that up and we'll see how we get on basically. I think next we'll start thinking about looking down here. And I'm gonna mount the wheelwood valve. Yeah. Start making a template. First bracket we made the template for. You can see where this is going because I've said first bracket. Pretty neat, but I didn't like the fact that the valve here is overhanging the chassis. My wheels clear it completely at the moment, but I would like to go a bit wider on the front, so I thought we'd move it in a bit further. My something must have been telling me I wasn't dead set on this bracket because I didn't really finish shaping it before I put it on to try it. Um, obviously wasn't feeling it at the time. So, a bit more of a boomerang shape. But we are going here, flip the valve around, tucks it right up over here out of the way, sits above the chassis. Yeah, it is a bit flimsy though. So we're gonna add Again, some more dim some dimple dies to that. Um, 
see how it fits. If not, it might have to reinforce it some other way or make it out of steel. Obviously, I've spoken about the dimple dies throughout this video so far. So what is a dimple die? Um, basically, you drill a hole in your material um, and then using these dies or formers, um, it enables to give you that sort of extruded look into the into the hole. Uh, makes it lighter, adds strength because it's putting another plane into the material, so stiffens it up. Um, with these, you can either put them in the press, use a bolt through them, or I just put them in the vise, to be honest. Just thought I'd show you one in action. Um, you do want to make sure the holes are completely deburred before you do this, because they'll dig in and warp the hole and make a right mess. Um, so nice clean holes, drill it to the size of the center of this one, and then put it the right way around. Just like that, it takes them from a standard hole like this one, which I can't do because it sits up against a flat bit, to that nice shaped hole there that gives that part even more strength. Yeah. So yeah, there it is, all fitted up. Fitted, fitted up. Um, you can see I've sw switched it round, because I was going to have it the other way around before, uh, just for pipe routing. It was going straight into the steering column there, which would have made that awkward. Obviously hard piped everywhere, so those pipes are going to, you know, like that's pretty rigid, that brake pipe they're gonna add a certain amount of rigidity to it. Um, but this one's got a little bit of flex in it as well. But yeah, again, I'm gonna add a, add a dimple die in here, I reckon. See if that stiffens that up. But again, make the brake lines, see, what it fits, see how it feels then. And if not, I can add another brace in there. But like I said, we're gonna let this one go with the flow, see how it evolves. All the materials we're gonna need. I've got 3 16th pipe for those front brake lines quarter inch brake pipe for the for the front to rear, um, unions, little joiner, benders, uh, and I'm, the flares aren't out yet. Um, I'm going to use copper nickel brake pipe rather than just straight copper. It's a bit harder to bend but you get a nicer finish and it stays a bit straighter rather than copper that can be wobbly the whole time and then you can never straighten it again. So that's um, Let's start making, may, I might make some up out of some TIG wire first, get the rough shape I want, and then we'll start bending some pipe up. One thing I have been finding working on the brake system on the American car and just American products in general, uh, they like to use a double flare or inverted flare on the brake lines um, compared to everything sort of European that just uses a single flare. Um, so buying some of the adapters has been a bit interesting because um, I'm using the bigger quarter inch pipe to go into the, from the mast cylinder into that brake bias valve. I've had to buy an adapter to go upsize it to that. And then adapters with, that take an inverted flare, um, which like this one, which still isn't quite right. I have to machine the end down because otherwise you only get like one turn on threads, which I don't like the idea of, so. Got the first one made up out of a template. Use some, um, Aluminium TIG wire. Yeah, quite happy with the shape of that, I reckon. Some of these warnings they put on stuff do make me laugh. So you get a little pot of grease for um, doing the brake flares, just put on the end so the uh, flaring tool doesn't damage the pipe basically. 
And uh, do not eat. Who opens up a pot of grease? Mmm, that looks yummy. I'm going to have it eat on that. What? So this is my front rear brake line, as you can see in the quarter inch. And uh, yeah, it went up there to the original proportioning valve. There's no chance I'm going to get that to go up there and reach, reach where the new bias valve is. So solution is I've bent up another bit of pipe for the front there, as you can see. And I'm going to use a joiner, which I'm going to put in there, um, proper joiner rather than trying to butt up two pieces of pipe like some people do. Yeah, proper fix. Don't really want to replace the whole line because it gets quite tight to the chassis at the back and it'd be awkward to change now the, the body's on. Doable, but yeah, this is going to be perfectly good enough. There it is, all made and joined up. Nice and safe there. Nice to use the original mounting point that I had as well. Straight up to the valve, so that's pretty neat. I also made up this one that comes along here. But I think I'm going to remake that because I did I copied the lines of the original one and I'm not really sure why it's got half the bends in it. It just looks a bit odd, so yeah, I might have another go at that. I've got a bit more roll. So I've already made this little link pipe here. Um, obviously we're making this big one that goes over to the other side now. I'm going to pop this off so I can copy these first couple of bends to get them in line and then we'll follow the template I've made. Yeah, I remade it. It didn't make any sense, the original one, or the line the original one made. So I've remade it, rooted it down here in there, into the brake line. Just got a, I'm going to put another little mount there and I'm going to replace these, the same type I've used on the rear, just to sort of keep it in keeping. I'm going to put another one in there as well, just because it's a bit loose where they go off onto the, their fittings. I just keep it nice and secure. that's the plumbing all done on these two brake valves, the, the line lock and the bias, wheel with proportioning valve. Um, turned out pretty good, pretty happy. They look nice and neat. Um, tried to get them as, uh, what light do we want? There we go. Yes, they line up pretty good. And then down there, pretty even and neat. And the same as down on the chassis there. And then the uh, concerns I had about the strength of the brackets being aluminium. Like I said, once the pipe's going to be on, they'd stiffen them up massively. So, you know, that's quite a lot of force on there. That's not moving much. And that, again, nice and rigid. Perfect. Nice lightweight brackets, neat dimple dies. Um, I'll paint them at some point. And yeah. Uh, pretty neat. So now all we've got left is to wire in the solenoid, get rid of this old warning wire that we're not going to use anymore, bleed the brakes, go do some burnouts. Woo! -hoo! So I have managed to get some time and uh, I painted these brackets with some wrinkle finish paint, the same as the rock covers. Um, makes them pretty stealth, gets rid of that shiny alley. Pretty happy how it's all turned out. I've bled it all. Um, no video footage on that. It was a bit of a faff. Had to. Uh, you can't open the the doors to get in, so I had to get the wife to climb in through the window and give me a hand bleeding it all through. Which, like I said, was a bit of a mission, but we've got there. It's all working. Just need to wire the line lock in now. Got the old girl down off the uh, axle stands now. 
So let's have a look at wiring up the old line lock slash burnout maker. Um, so initially I just need to run these wires into the car, which I've got a grommet up there I'm gonna go in through, because obviously that's the factory bulkhead connector. Can't go through there. So we're going to go into there. Um, the factory or the manufacturer's website says it only draws about five amps. So I've got this little switch from my local Halfords as a temporary solution. Oh yeah, this is only temporary for now because um, I want to get it done ready for two days time retro rides, which would have probably already happened by the time this video comes out. So yeah, temporary, get it working, think of a better solution because I think eventually I want to have like a momentary button on the steering wheel, I think. So I can just kind of hold it, do the burnout, let go. Um, whereas for now we've got a toggle switch, which I'm not sure where I'm going to put yet. But anyway, only draws five amps, won't need a relay. Um, just in this says it takes six amps, which is good because it didn't say on the box. And uh, managed to keep the wires fairly hidden. They follow the brake pipe under there. And then I've earthed it out there. There's no point taking that into the car and then run the rest in through that, or the rest, the other wire, in through the bulkhead there. Which you can see under there, coming in. I used a bit of TIG wire just to poke through, taped it on, pull the wire through. Now I just need to side on the uh, temporary switch location. Hopefully you can see. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm hoping Mike Finnegan, Dave Freiberger be impressed with the cable tie usage there. Let's give her a quick test. Ignition on. Don't know if you can hear that clicking, but so yeah, let's put the brake on. Activate it. See if we can move the car. Go nowhere. We'll give it a real test when it's uh, daylight and we'll go out for a drive. See if it does some burnouts again. I'm afraid I'm going to make you all wait to uh, see any footage of this thing doing burnouts. Um, I'm going to film a little final conclusion video to this little series um, where we test out the exhaust system and the new line lock by doing burnouts, of course. But hopefully you've enjoyed this video, seeing how I plumbed in and wired in a line lock and bias valve into my Chevelle. Um, if you did, give us a like, give us a subscribe and uh, help us keep this channel growing.